David, first off, it's an honor to be with you, and thank you for having us. You know, Perseverance launched today, and we're so excited because this is the dawn of a new space age. And what, why are we sending it? It is a precursor mission in anticipation of astronauts going to Mars. The president's told us to get to the moon in preparation to do that, but also, ultimately, we've got to get to Mars. This rover is going to be there picking up samples that we're going to return on another mission back to Earth. So it's really part of a round trip mission uh, to another planet, which will be the first time ever. We've also got a helicopter on it, and uh, we're gonna see if it can fly. Uh, it's about four pounds. The rotors are, there are two of them, and it's uh, about four feet long. Uh, and we're really gonna see whether we can use it uh, one, at possibly as a forward scout in the future, but also maybe as a communications relay if our astronauts get out of sight of home base or their rover. So, so Jim, there's so much of this that I find fascinating, but let's stop with the helicopters for a second. The, the atmosphere, as I understand it, on Mars is much thinner than uh, on Earth. What challenges that raise? Why do you think you can fly a helicopter with a lot thinner atmosphere? Yeah. You know, we've been practicing in a chamber at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, uh, the density of the atmosphere on Mars is 1% that of Earth's. So it is going to be challenging. But again, that's why we're sending it up there to see if we can do it. That's what we try to do the impossible at NASA. And uh, this is one of them. And I did not realize you're going to actually send another mission up to retrieve uh, samples and bring them back. That certainly has never been done before. When do you hope to do that? You know, that's, uh, that mission is called Mars Sample Return. And the hope is that they'll be bringing those samples back by 2031. Fascinating, fascinating. Now, we're not the only ones shooting for Mars right now. China's got a, a, a rocket going up there. We also have UAE. Give us a sense of what they're doing and how it compares with what we're doing. You know, it's, uh, first off, UAE has been a great partner. And they're actually working with three universities in the United States in preparation for their, their mission called HOPE. So we've been right there with them. We're Jim Bridenstine, the administrator, and myself were on the phone with them just a few weeks ago. Uh, so that's gone really well. Yes, China is also sending up uh, a uh, an orbiter and uh, hopefully a rover. A rover. Uh, again, you know, we we welcome everyone, uh, you know, that want to work together in space. And when I say that, it's about safety. It's about sharing data. It's about being timely with sharing that data. All those things are so important. You know, our job is to bring the world together, and that's what we're trying to do. One of the things that strikes me, Jim, that you've been doing is really having a mix of private and public enterprises really coming together. We certainly have seen with SpaceX, we've seen the Falcon and things like that. Is there a role for the private sector even in something as far away as Mars, or is it more for Earth orbit? You know, David, thank you for the question. First off, you know, we just launched our two astronauts last month. I think you were talking to the administrator then about it. And uh, hopefully they're gonna be coming back on Sunday. So our eyes are gonna, we're gonna be heading to mission control very soon to start preparing for that return. But with that, you know, we really as NASA, in a, the Apollo era, we developed, we built, and we launched rockets and capsules. Today, we wanna be a customer to the likes of SpaceX or Boeing or Blue Origins or others. So, you know, you know where we are with, you know, with the current economy. And we know this is the only way we're gonna be able to continue deep space exploration. Is NASA gonna to continue to be involved? Absolutely. But in the meantime, we need to have the commercial marketplace expand in low Earth orbit take it to the moon, and hopefully take it farther out to Mars. You know, as you say, we've talked to Jim Bridenstine, the, the administrator, about uh, commercial applications with respect to Earth orbits. Are the commercial applications that you anticipate in Mars, I mean, how could, let me be frank, how can a company make money off of that? You know, David, think about it. One of the things we're going to do, and again, we're going to prove a lot of this out. The president's told us, get to the moon by 2024. We're going to have the first woman and the next man land on the moon at that point in time. But the real intent is to prove out what we need to do and know before we go to Mars. Part of that is a demonstration of what we call in situ resource utilization. We know there's water ice at the south pole of the moon. 
We're gonna see whether we can harvest that water ice for oxygen to breathe, for water to drink, and very importantly, hydrogen as fuel. If we can see that we can do that, we know there's water 15 kilometers underneath the surface of Mars. Again, we may be finding ourselves in a, having stepping stones get to the moon. The gravity well of the moon is one sixth that of Earth. It'd be a lot easier to launch those, right. that infrastructure right. from there. Right. So we'd save a lot of money. We may be able to do that on Mars too. Right. It's how we can get right. to deep space economically. And, and finally, Jim, uh, put this in context. You mentioned we have a lot of economic challenges here. It's not just economic challenges. We've got some biological ones with a pandemic yeah. globally. How important is it for us to be reaching as far as Mars right now in this point in our history? You know, you think about what we've done. Think of Apollo and all the things that Apollo brought to us. This camera that I'm communicating through with you wouldn't be here if we had not had Apollo. The digital revolution occurred and many other things we got from that effort. And we expect we'll be inventing many more new things with this effort. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very exciting for those of us who were around back uh, when we landed on the moon. I remember I was a teenager at the time. And uh, this really re brings back some very fond memories, Jim. David, you know, you think about it. The splashdown that's coming with commercial crew, half yeah. of America have never witnessed a splashdown yeah. like you and I did. Yeah. 